Hello, my friends. Welcome to The Big Picture. It's wonderful to have you join us. And today we continue our study of Isaiah. This week we look at the hard way. I'm Pastor Gary. Let's bow our heads together in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the way that you lead and guide in our lives. Lord, we want to say thank you for giving us the scriptures. Thank you for giving us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving us the gift of your son. I pray that indeed you'd be with us as we open your word, as we share, as we talk together. Oh, we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It was a number of years ago, I'd been asked to speak to a group of university students on Friday evening. The subject was video gaming. Now, I'm not a gamer myself, but in preparation for the meeting, I read professional reviews of the most popular games of that particular year. At that time, I discovered that the games had realistic violence, rape, and explicit sexuality, and a number of the games had strong occult themes. As we chatted together that Friday night, I discovered that almost all the students had played the games, some occasionally, some frequently. The next day, one of the students had spoken to his parents, who were also leaders of the church teen Sabbath school. These parents approached me and asked me to take the teen Sabbath school on the same subject. I was a little reticent, but I very quickly discovered that many of the teens were very familiar with the same games and were certainly not ignorant of the violence, the illicit sexuality and the occult themes. Many of the teens were younger than the media ratings on the games. As we spoke, it became abundantly evident that these games were leading them a long way from God. So what does video gaming have to do with this week's Bible study? Actually, I suggest to you a lot more than you might realise. Consider where we left our study last week. Ahaz was being attacked by Israel and Syria. To repel the two nations, he befriended a third nation, Assyria. And Assyria did what it was probably going to do anyway. Assyria destroyed Judah's adversaries. Unfortunately, as our study guide points out, the bad news was that Assyria, the ally and new friend of Ahaz, the one that he had chosen to help him, would turn out to be far more dangerous foe than Syria or Israel had been. By returning down God's freely offered deliverance, Ahaz had guaranteed defeat. If Ahaz thought his world was falling apart, things were only going to get a lot worse. The friend that Ahaz had adopted was indeed dangerous to his spiritual health. Any semblance of regard Ahaz might have had for the God of heaven soon disappeared. He copied the altar that was at Damascus. He moved so far from the God of heaven that the writer of Chronicles is able to declare, Now in the time of his distress, King Ahaz became increasingly unfaithful to the Lord, for he sacrificed to the gods of Damascus which had defeated him, Because he said, the gods of the kings of Syria help them. I will sacrifice to them that they may help me. But they were the ruin of him and all Israel. Could I suggest that this Sabbath, your small group discuss the downhill spiritual slide that was experienced by Ahaz? How many times have you witnessed this downhill slide in those within your personal friendship circle? Perhaps you could ask this. In your experience, how many times have you seen a person who was a believer drift into apostasy? Don't use any names, of course, but please share. How did this drift to apostasy occur? What were the steps? How could the experience of Ahaz be a warning for each of us. In Ahaz's case, the slide is just so pronounced. He went against the wisdom of the prophet. He formed illicit alliances or friendships. Uh, He visited the Assyrian capital, uh, copied the altar that was at Damascus before finally worshipping the gods of Assyria. 
the scriptures record that they were the ruin of all Israel. After you've looked at Ahaz's spiritual slide, why not jump straight over to Thursday study and look at something that is absolutely vital for contemporary Christians to understand. Thursday and Friday study are both so relevant to the era in which we live. These studies go right to the very heart of the story I shared at the beginning of this presentation. On Thursday, we start to see one of the major influences that caused Ahaz to move a long way from any semblance of allegiance to the God of heaven. Our study guide rightly points out that Ahaz was deeply involved in pagan religion, which was heavily interconnected with the occult. The pamphlet very importantly reminds readers that God's people are to have nothing to do with spiritualistic manifestations. Our study guide then again correctly connects these ancient practices to contemporary occult and New Age manifestations. With this in mind, perhaps you might like to discuss this issue. Perhaps you could ask this. Do you see any connection between the spiritualism of old and that which appears in movies, books, TVs, video gaming and popular culture? Have you noticed the increasing emphasis in occult manifestations that's becoming evident in many culturally acceptable entertainment forms? Do you believe this cultural norm is drawing believers away from Christ? My friends, this question is so important. I've spoken to both university students and teens on this issue on many occasions. In weeks of prayer, I often find this discussion arises. Increasingly, I'm finding parents at wit's end as they see youth riding the same downhill slide as did Ahaz. The slide started almost imperceptibly. He moved against the wisdom of the prophet. He formed alliances or friendships with those who knew not the God of heaven. He visited the Assyrian capital. He copied the altar that was at Damascus before finally transitioning to worshipping the gods of Assyria. Do you see that path happening today? Unfortunately, I'm increasingly conscious that this Ahaz slide is being replicated time and time again by both youth and by church members of very long standing. Do you understand why Isaiah, after speaking against any form of occult interest, calls the people to return to the law of God and to the testimony of the prophets? David saw those as being sweeter than honey and more to be desired than gold. In the word of God, Isaiah saw wonderful light. How well he would have agreed with King Jehoshaphat of Judah when he said, Believe in the Lord your God and you will be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. They remained sound words, even for us today. Thank you so much for joining with us. I'm Pastor Gary. If you'd like to contact us, we can be contacted at the address on your screen. If you'd like to gain a copy of the script for your use in Sabbath school, it can be downloaded from the Living Ministry Media website. May the Lord richly bless you as you dig deep again into the inspired word. Thank you so much for joining with us. 